for schools coaching. Explain how, uh, share with us how the Hurley community has welcomed you and embraced you and made you feel part of the family over there. I'll tell you, when Greg invited me, when did you invite me out, Greg? When you called me out? 2010? Yeah, I think it was your first season, 2010. And, uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I mean, I kind of came to a point in my coaching career where I was kind of burnt out. <laughs> never say never. And, man, when I arrived, I mean, just the, the atmosphere, you know, the fans <clears throat> are always just uh, excited for Friday night. The boys work hard. Uh, Coach Tester did a great job with the blue-collar mentality, and that's my style. You know, Greg and I, we grew up in the same same decade, and it's uh, it's old school, in your face, blue collar, work hard, and just get after it, and do do what you do. The community over there always has been pretty much a football oriented. Absolutely, our community. boosters, our boosters is the best. I mean, they're unmatched. They are always raising money, uh, doing whatever they need to do to uh, get the kids equipment. Like I said, they're unmatched. Well, that's key in any any successful program is community involvement. I think so many people are missing that ingredient, and without having to make the parents do it, or the or, or not just parents but other people in the community who you know, don't even have children playing, they're on board with this thing. Yeah, and I thought all in. That's one big plus of early. You, they really do support support their kids, support their coaches, and uh, it's just phenomenal phenomenal atmosphere with, with the fans and. and like I said, just you got tremendous support from all up from everybody, and uh, Coach Church is also getting that support right now. So uh, uh, he better keep winning, place. right? <laughs> you know, everybody's talking about this eight-man football stuff because of dwindling in numbers and this and that. But you got a you got a school sitting here, Hurley High School, sitting boys. here for 174 total kids, probably 80 boys in the school. He's got almost 40 players out. You're looking at 50 percent. So that's 50 percent of the school, and there's no. That's to right. me, there's no excuse for a trip away school not to have 18, 20 boys that we was talking about last That's week. Right. When a school at Hurley, like you said, Hurley's probably got 80, 90 boys. Coach Church has got 38, 40 out. That's pretty good dag on numbers uh, in the school right there. But like you said, I, I talked to him going back to them parents. Uh, guys, I called him one day and I was like, what are you doing? He said, man, i got a bunch of parents over here painting the bathrooms, cleaning the bathrooms, painting the concession. Boys, when you do that, I mean, that helps the program big time. And like I said, I, I feel like, like you said, Coach Tester started all that, what, 12, 13 years ago, and they fed into it. And Anthony, uh, Coach Church is sitting there doing the same thing, keeping it going, and the parents and fans are still there, and it's just a good thing going right now, uh, early Rebel football. This is not a Friday night thing. It's it's all week. It's all week. Yeah, all week. All right, well, Coach, we want you to sit in and rest the show with us here. We're going to talk about a few other things. This time we're going to go to uh, and mention our uh, sponsors one more time. And we'd like to thank uh, Freedom Wireless, Bellasino's Pizza and Grinders, Grundy Auto Sales, Hurley IGA, Hurley Pharmacy, Express Print Pack and Ship, Hurley Community Pharmacy, CarQuest Auto Parts, Wooden Horse Grill, Buchanan Pharmacy Associates, uh, Plaza Economy Drug coming soon to the Grundy Plaza, and the Buchanan General Hospital, and we'd also like to recognize Buchanan Therapy Services in the Grundy Plaza. We appreciate all these sponsors and encourage everyone to patronize them. They help make this show possible. Well, it's that moment that everybody has been waiting for. Uh, it's that time each week where we uh, attempt to reach deep into the mind of Coach Krieger and extrapolate some of the wisdom that he has dwelling there by asking him some questions that would normally stump the average man. These questions that we're about to ask have been hermetically sealed in an envelope in a uh, bank vault and been under guard for the last 24 hours by security, uh, and it was recently see. delivered by a armored truck, and uh, we just opened them. He has not seen these questions, and he does not know the answers uh, or has not had an opportunity to prepare the answers. And so here we go. We're going to try to stump the Krieg. And once again, if you'd like to stump the Krieg, Send your questions to I, Facebook. I think we already stumped him last week. Who is the defensive coordinator at Grant? Yeah, I got stumped <laughs> big time. That was my bad. But, yeah, boys, hey, and it's I got brought to my attention that there's a lot of words out there that the first letter is silent that I was told from a buddy of mine, uh, Mr. Uh, Drew Keene. 
named about ten off in about two seconds. So a uh, gnat is one. Yeah, it's not a good gnat. It's a gnat. Yeah. So, but see, we don't think the way you think. And, uh, that's that's, that's why we're doing this. Well, way. first, I know there's one person put a stump to Craig on their um, Facebook or after the whistle Facebook and Marcus. It's forty five pounds, yeah. buddy. I lived in that weight room in high school, buddy. Oh, yeah. I knew how much the bar weighed. Yeah, Marcus still doesn't want to know how much the bar weighed in the weight room. I assume you probably didn't yes, get in there. I have. All right, right. so here we yeah. go. We've got two questions from the creek today. And the uh, uh, first question is, what would happen if Pinocchio said, my nose will now grow? What would happen if Pinocchio said that? What? I guess it'd grow. <laughs> I don't know. Well, this is ignorant. <laughs> Well, like, I mean, like, most of what happens when he lies? He grows. Okay, so if he says, "What will if he if he says my nose will now grow?" What would happen? Would it grow or would it not grow? Well, he's a lion because it can't grow. Well, if he says it will now grow and it grows, well, then he'd be telling the truth. This is ignorant. I have no idea. Yeah, give us that. It here. will grow. Okay, he's just it will grow. grow. All right, because he's that. a liar. Oh, Pinocchio a liar. is a liar. <laughs> he's a liar, but if he says it will grow, then he'd be telling the truth, so it technically wouldn't be a lie. Well, it won't grow. All right. Anyhow, let's move on. Uh, who put the alphabet in alphabetical order? I know this one. All right, who was? I know this one. It was John Hancock. John Hancock. Put the, yeah. Is that your final answer? That's my final John Hancock. Final answer, John Hancock put the alphabet in alphabetical order. Anybody disagree with that? Coach, uh, church, you have any wisdom there? He don't even know who John Hancock is. <laughs> John Hancock. I don't know. Uh, Chris Farley calls it Herbie. Herbie On Tommy Hancock. Boy. Yes. He, he said he got it wrong, but he said everybody knows it was Herbie Hancock. Herbie Hancock, that's right. <laughs> Herbie, well, yeah, that was a big song or something back then. No, Herbie was Elvis. No, that's Herbie. That's a totally different one. Oh. Herbie, that's totally different. Y'all know Herbie. <coughs> Y'all know Herbie. Everybody, Elvis. Everybody, shout out to Herbie. Yeah, uh, Herbie, know, if you're listening, buddy. Herbie, if you're I listening. hope you're still singing Elvis. Ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'd like to remind our fans, uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, or uh, visit us on Facebook and give us a like on Facebook. We're looking for correspondence uh, at these games uh, each week. If you follow a team uh, to a game, sign on and be a correspondent. Let us know. And all we ask for you to do is at the end of the game, take out your cell phone uh, and film a short little video on your phone. And hey, go one. interview the coach for us and put it on there, yeah. guys. Go down there and say, this is for after the whistle. Yeah. Can we ask you a few questions? Yeah, interview a player. Anything. It's great. Or the fans. Ask them what they thought Yeah, about. ask the fans. There you go. Yeah, get out there and let's get this thing out there. Yeah, it's posted on Friday night so people have somewhere to go and actually get not just a score that someone typed in, but actually some more information. And let's get more interactive on that. Okay. With that, uh, it's time for our Hurley IGA Top 5. Our Hurley IGA Top 5 is brought to you by Hurley IGA. Stop by and check out Dotson's IGA Express in Hurley Square. Dotson's IGA is known for its fresh meat department. They take special orders and will even prepare it to suit your taste. Contact Dotson's IGA for the best steaks in town. They also sell a wide variety of trays. So if you're in need of a sandwich tray, meat tray, cheese tray, or even a fruit tray, they've got you covered. So stop by and check out Dotson's IGA Express, you'll be glad you did. Dotson's IGA Express, hometown proud, they are Dotson's IGA. And don't forget, guys, you cannot beat IGA's meat. I can tell you that right now. Yes, that is correct. All right, top five. Well, gentlemen, some things changed on the top five. Some teams were in, some teams are now out. We've had teams move around. Um... Let's take a look at 1A here, see what we got. Well, 1A switched up a little bit. Uh, one team fell out, which was George Witt, that lost, I'm sure, to a pretty good Radford team, and Patrick Henry moved in. Patrick Henry with a pretty good win. Uh, Patrick Henry's going to be at number... They're at number three. Number three. three. Yeah, they're at number three. Number three for Coach Palmer. Uh, moving his bunch into number three here but, on After the Whistle. Well, uh, and our five will be starting at number five. We have Hurley. 
they're maintaining that spot there. Uh, no pressure, Coach Church. No, no pressure no there. No we pressure. Uh, got you there at five. Grundy, uh, not a terrible loss last week. I mean, they lost to what we have as the, one of the best teams in 2A, which is our number one. But uh, Grundy's still staying there at four. Patrick Henry wins uh, big and jumps in there in uh, George West's spot. Galax moves up a spot, and Chill Howie is our uh, number one team in 1A. All right, so real, real, uh, real quick recap. Try to say that fast. Uh, Hurley at five, Grundy at four, PH at three, Galax at two, and Chill Howie at one. All right, uh, Coach Tester, what about 2A? 2A, we had a uh, we had a little bit of changes, but uh, I think we still have Graham coming in at number five after their loss to Bluefield. Uh, About know, like a loss that Grundy took. Yeah, I mean, so they lost a very good team. Nothing to be ashamed of there. We still got them at number five, and I know Coach uh, Tony Palmer up there is doing a good job, and uh, they'll bounce back from that. We got Coach uh, Coach Chris of Virginia High still at number four. Uh, he's always done a good job up there. Got a, uh, some good athletes, and he had a. Had a good win over Tazel. We jumped out on them early and uh, held, them off. held them off and on a really good Tazel team. Uh, at number three uh, this week, this, these guys in my book could be from anywhere from three to one, these next three. So we got Union right now at number three. They had a, a win over uh, John I. Burton this week. Uh, I think it's 35-21. Uh, I heard they were really big and strong up front. Got a Got a kid back in the backfield, I think a Jenkins kid. I watched him run track. If, if he gets loose, there's nobody going to catch him. But uh, like I said, we got Union at number three, Rich Lands at number two, and Ridgeview at number one. Any one of those top three there, I think uh, you can toss around. But uh, it's going to be inter interesting in a couple weeks to see how that ends up. Well, one thing for sure, we're going to know here in about – 30 minutes, 20 minutes on Union and Richlands. Yeah, okay. We're counting that one down. Yeah, we'll go over that in a minute of uh, the games we've got coming up this week. But Union and Richlands play at Richlands this week, so that's a big game early in the second week of football season. Uh, so, uh, quick recap. Uh, Graham at five, Virginia High at four, Union at three, Richlands number two, and Ridgeview number one this week. Uh, before we close out this session, uh, this segment here, uh, who do you think we might see? Let's take a shot at this. Who do you think might be out of our top five for next week? Who's um, in danger of getting bumped out? Or, or even better yet, who do you think might slide in? That's two A or one A. Uh, either one. One A. I gotta. I'm, I feel like uh, Hurley and Grundy has a good chance to move up. Just depending, I mean, on their games this week, possibly. But we'll just have to wait and see. I feel like Chihaly's safe at number one. I mean, I think we all agree right now that Chihaly's... I think uh, Galax is pretty safe, too, right now. I think they lost a tough one this week to Glenn Farr up in uh, They got Radford Rome. again this week. Yeah, they got Radford this week, but uh, those guys, they'll be battle-tested uh, by the end of the season. And I, I've been reading that this might be one of the... Uh, best Galax teams, from what I've understand from some scrimmages and stuff. I think Coach Dixon's changed it up and went to a little bit of spread, so got some good athletes. So, uh, you know, I look for them up there with Chill Howie again at the end of the season. Well, we, we said earlier on last week that we wouldn't be surprised if those two teams didn't finish. Maybe not one, two, but one of them, you know, one of them be one, one of them be two, but right. maybe not in the exact order that we picked them. Uh, but. Uh, every week at this time, we will pick the uh, early IGA top five. We choose teams from the Mountain West, the BDD, uh, the Hoagie, the Southwest District, the Cumberland District, and the Mountain Seven. And uh, so tune in and catch that uh, each week. All right, well, now it's the time we're going to talk about this week's games. Uh, this week, we've got a long list of, of games here coming up, and kickoff is probably you know 20 minutes uh, away from most of these games. Most games are starting at 7 o'clock. Uh, Coach Krieger, let's take a look at this week's games and uh, what do we have on the tap? Well, starting off here, we got Gate City. We talked about, about earlier, about it earlier at Abingdon, Gate City at Abingdon. Like Coach Esther said, he they seen them play. He feels like they're going to be there, but another tough game this week for Gate City. And you know, growing up, that's all we heard: Gate City, yeah. Gate City. And guys, you just feel like every 
going to need to turn it around, but it's going to be tough again this week with the Abingdon team that won B 